<laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Diesel Place. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in to me once again, guys. I totally appreciate it. And to all my subscribers and my small growing pool of subscribers, thank you all so much, guys. I totally appreciate all the love. You know what? We are Superman today. We're Superman today because we're going to help guys out. We're going to help the new guys who are playing ARC or just started playing ARC with a few ARC tips on how you are going to start ARC out. So, you know, when you start ARC out and there are like so many dinos around and they're like, there's just, just like the water and then there's the land and then you got a whole bunch of gates and then you have the obliques down here and you're like, you're like wondering, oh my god, where am I and what am I actually supposed to do? So, you go on YouTube and then you start um, googling or searching a lot of videos and you know what I'm just gonna make your life really easy guys so this is my tips for those guys who are actually starting to play ARC so stay tuned selecting a server you have to decide if you want to be a PvE a PvP or a PvPVE player so for starters I usually recommend a PvE setting because it's a little bit more forgiving as of the PvP because you don't have to wake up to date dinos and losing your items overnight like what you can actually expect in a PvP setting so for those guys who like a little bit more action and you don't mind losing your dinos or getting killed by other players, you can actually give PvP a go. PvP can be real fun sometimes. So there is another setting called the PvPVE. So you get this games in the unofficial servers whereby the server setting is PvP during a certain period of time and then after that it automatically switches to a player versus environment setting so that you can actually you know come online and do some defending when you are in the PvP setting and maybe switch over to farming during the PvE setting. So you need to go ahead with the building of a character you do not know what to do so this is my recommendation to you guys in a pvp setting go ahead try to make your character as small as possible from body to torso legs arms and even your head the logic behind this is pretty straightforward guys the smaller your character is the harder it is for your opponents to see you and also aim at you so that you can get killed in a gunshot so between the male and female you know from a very practical point of view if you look at it really closely the smallest male and the smallest female the cross section is pretty significantly different the female is actually significantly smaller than the male so i'll actually prefer to go ahead with the female for practicality and then for the eye color and the hair color it really doesn't matter and also similarly for the skin color it really doesn't make much of a difference guys so go ahead play ahead with these three aspects of your character for pvp so in ARC, it's all about dinosaurs, guys, or, you know, most part of it, it's about dinosaurs and taming them. <laughs> so you need to go ahead and start taming your dinosaur as soon as you can. So the first dinosaur I usually like to go for is either the Parasaur or the Triceratops or more lovingly known as a trike, like what we have down here. So go ahead, make the slingshots, equip the slingshots with stone and start hitting him. You don't want to kill the dinosaur. You want to raise his torpor so that he becomes unconscious and you can actually place berries in his inventories or meat, you know, depending on what kind of dinosaur he is, a herbivore or a carnivore. And you know what? I personally prefer the tribe because he gives a little bit more damage and he farms berries significantly better as compared to the Parasaur. So go ahead and start taming this bad boy or bad girl, whichever gender you get. But just take note about something guys, there's another way to actually bring them down for starters. Okay, the wooden club. You can actually make this wooden club and then you can go ahead really close to the dino and start hitting it to raise his torpor. You know, getting a wooden club is all good if you have a dino that runs away, but not really good if you have something like the tribe who attacks you. And contrary to popular belief is that every dinosaur 
gets higher torpor when you hit it on its head. That's not entirely true guys, you know like for the uh, patchy, the patchy rhino and the trike and some other dinosaurs, the torpor on the head is actually lower than when they got hit in the body. So go ahead, continue to hit them until the dinosaur is down, go into his inventory and get the bad boy teamed up. Another one more important thing that you guys need to take note of is necro berries, which is the blackberries. The blackberries are down there, not for you to eat them guys. The blackberries are down there so that you can actually increase the unconscious level of your dinosaur when it's actually decreasing. Once the dino starts running away from you, you know that his torpo is getting a little bit high and just continue to chase after him to get him down. But just remember not to hit the dino anymore after the dinosaur falls unconscious. Reason being, it actually significantly reduces his taming effectiveness which means he tames out at a lower level. You wouldn't actually want that. And then for herbivores, they tame out the best with major berries but actually they eat any berries other than necro berries. And the final thing you need to take note of for taming is to remember to guard your tame guys while he's being tamed it can actually be hit by carnivores in that area so what i'll actually like to do is bring along some wooden uh, walls or tash walls and try to build it around the dinosaur to safeguard him or her until it's tamed Another important thing about Ark is the building guys, you know you have tash, you have wood, you have stone and then you have metal. So you start off with tash but tash is pretty weak so I wouldn't recommend you guys building really big buildings out of tash unless it's just for testing. So be a nomad, try to move around the map, orientate yourself and then once you're ready you know try to build a base out of wood initially. Wood isn't that strong but it's definitely stronger than tash and once you get your wood actually going on you can actually slowly upgrade it to either stone and thereafter to metal. You won't be able to last long with clubs and slingshots to tame your dinos, especially the higher level ones or carnivore. What you have to do is firstly craft the mortar and pestle which can be found in your engram and then after that also learn the engram for narcotics. Place the mortar and pestle down on a foundation and then after that put in spalt meat and necro berries into the mortar and pestle and thereafter you can actually craft narcotics. So once you got narcotics going on you have to make stone arrows. Once you have the stone arrows coming along and you have narcotics, one stone arrow and one narcotic actually makes one trank arrows. Also remember to make a bow and equip your trank arrows to the bow and you are good to go for your next level of taming. Now it's actually time for you to go ahead and start getting metal. So I'll usually like to go with a raptor or a carnivore that you have tamed so that he can actually protect you. Metal nodes are usually these uh, glowy little nodes that you can actually find in the mountainous region. In the mountains, there is abundance of carnivore guys. So don't go there without a dino and be careful. All right, go ahead to that node and then start hitting them a few times and you should be able to get metal out of it. Once you've got the metal, all right, throw the metal into the refining forge, add it some wood so that you can actually light it up. And this metal is kind of useless, guys. The only use it has is for the feeding troll, okay? The feeding troll I think it's one of the really few um, structures that requires the raw metal but what you actually need is a metal ingots which you guys will be actually seeing it popping out real soon. So two metal equal equals to one metal ingot. So with one metal ingot I'm just going to take the metal ingot right here and we're going to go ahead and build a smithy. So for a smithy, you will need 5 ingots, stones, wood and hide. So we're going to get a smithy done right now. So we got our smithy done and the next thing that you guys need to do is to get your 
metal tools which is three of them actually it's three plus one so the first thing you need to actually get is your metal pick then all right and then after that go for your metal hatchet and then your metal sickle all right the sickle is great for harvesting fiber and then last but not least it's not a tool but it's something to protect you it's your very first proper weapon it is the pike so go ahead put in your metal ingots and wood hide and whatever it actually requires and start making this four items the most difficult things to do is to find yourself around the map sometimes so there are three ways that you can actually go about doing this the first way is actually try to use the terrain try to recognize the terrain as much as you can like try to recognize the cliffs the rivers intersections maybe a certain kind of a rock and stuff like that all right so the second thing that you can actually do is to use the obliques so i'm just going to open up the map right now like here okay and you can actually see that the red obliques is where i am presently over at the southwestern side of the map and for the blue obliques right which is straight ahead of us he is on top of the mountain at about 25 25 and as for the green obliques which is right over here it is over at about 60 70 so try to orientate your way around using the obliques and the third thing that you can actually use which many people don't actually realize is the moon right the amazing thing about arc is that the moon sets on the west and rises on the east so i'm just going to show you guys down here okay let's take a look at it take a look at it all right this we are actually facing northwards and if you can see the moon right i'm just going to move a little bit to surface okay this is the north position right as you can guys can see the moon is actually moving towards the western side slowly so next up start to go for your flying mount when you can the most used class of dinos in the game get a bola go for a pteranodon throw the bola the pteranodon to keep it in its place and then after that unload your trank arrows onto the dino just be a little bit careful with this guys i tend to use a bow instead of a crossbow for lower level pteranodons because a crossbow can actually kill them because of uh, the higher damage once the pteranodon is down Move, move over to him and look into his inventory and place in narco berries and narcotics to keep the total high. Tame it up with meat and if you have prime meat, it's even better. He's going to tame out way faster. So once you have your flying dinos, what I like to do is that I like to move around the map and actually look for drops. You got to be really careful at night, guys. You know, at night, it's good to look for drops because the it's pretty bright and you can actually see them better but you got to be really careful at night especially on servers you cannot adjust your gamma once you have hopped off your dino you got to be really careful because there can be any unexpected carnivores around that are ready to pounce onto you and sometimes you get such drops whereby it's pretty difficult to land on something to actually get them so you got to think about hopping off your dino like this all right assessing the crate can we access this all right can we access the crate let me just try it we can't we can access the crate but sometimes if you are able to land and access it on cliffs you gotta be really careful on where you're actually hopping off because once you hop off <laughs> raptor cross is in once you actually hop off, there is no way that you can actually get back to your dino unless you, you know, land and make him follow you, which is going to create lots of problems for you. So another thing that you guys need to actually take note of that is that drops are really awesome, especially in official servers, because they give you the much needed blueprint because you guys will not be able to learn all the ingrams. Whoa, where is it? which is over here because of the lack of ingram points so blueprints will actually give you the much required need to you know 
control the points you actually spend on your ingram so we're just going to check what is over here so we got basic stuff because it's the white drop so there's six different kind of drop guys right the first drop is the white which you will get at level 3 green at level 15 blue level 25 purple level 35 yellow level 40 and red level 60 this is for the island all right over in scorch earth white is level 3 green is level 15 blue is level 30 purple level 45 yellow level 55 red level 70 so once you have a whole bunch of dinos with you there are three settings that you can actually set them one is too aggressive another one is too passive and the last one it's neutral so aggressive is pretty simple because whatever he sees or she sees he will just attack and passive regardless of what happens he will not attack and thirdly it's neutral if you attack him or her he will attack you back so play around with it guys it depends on your play style and how you actually want to do it usually what people will do is that uh, they tend to set the dinos on passive when they are protected within the base the reason because is that the when you once you go offline and something actually attacks your dinos aggroes it your dinos actually fight back but the problem with these dinos is that they do not come back to that location so because of that when you log in you know if you don't have a transponder or something that tracks your dinos your dinos can actually go missing so there you go guys those are my personal starting tips for those guys who are playing the most amazing game in the world <laughs> arc survival evolves in no time you guys will get the hang out of the game you know you'll lose a few dinos here and there just don't get too attached to your dino guys you know it's pretty saddening sometimes when you lose your first few teams but you'll get used to it after some time and I'll just have to caveat and end this video by saying this video is by no in no means in sequence of what the things you are supposed to do in the game right it's just to help those beginners out especially the ps4 guys who are really new to this game so that you can get a hang out or even get a flavor of what this game is all about so if you really like this video and if you found this video really useful or really helpful to you please remember to smash the subscribe button leave your comment below share the video of course and smash the like buttons too till next time take care and goodbye lovely people